YouTube fam, welcome back to my channel. I hope everybody is doing well. I know it's a crazy, like heavy time in the US right now. For the entirety of this video, for obvious reasons, I'm going to go ahead and have hashtag Black Lives Matter. And why? Because Black Lives Matter. And I feel like sometimes it's something that people tend to forget, clearly. So um, in my hopes to kind of use my platform for some good, that is what I will be doing for this video. Today, I hope that I can use my content to uplift you a little bit. And I'm gonna talk all about my hair growth journey. I get so many questions on this because as you know, I started my natural hair journey by big chopping. So I big chopped back in December, 2017. And to this day, people still ask me how I got my hair to grow so fast. So I did do a video on this about a year or two ago, just explaining like some hair growth tips that I knew. But since then, I've learned a lot. So in this video, we are gonna be covering everything, every single thing that you need to know about getting your hair to grow as fast as it possibly can. And then I'm also gonna be going through my personal like big chop story. So just going through like the different stages of growth that I went through and all of that good stuff. So we're gonna get into all of it, and as usual, please do make sure that you are subscribed to my channel, and also hit that notification bell so you can get a notification every single time the new new drops. All right, let's get started. Okay, so first things first, I just wanna get this out of the way. Hair growth is largely determined by your genetics. So some people are more genetically wired to have their hair grow faster than you. And that's something that you obviously cannot change. However, with that being said, there are still things that you can do to make sure that your hair can grow as fast as it possibly can. So those are the kind of things that I'm gonna be covering in this video, but I just also wanted to mention that this is why it's so, so important not to compare yourself too harshly against another girl, because everybody's genetics are so different and that's literally the one thing that you cannot change on yourself. So the aim of the game is really just to try and keep your hair as healthy and happy as possible so that way it's in the best state to grow as fast as it possibly can so before we get into some of the tips I just want to go ahead and talk about my journey really quick so as y'all know I did start my natural hair journey with a big chop which is very exciting this was back in December 2017 and I went super short so I didn't actually plan on big chopping when I decided I wanted to go natural I was like I'm gonna transition it's fine I'll transition for a year like I literally had never had short hair in my entire life. Like my mom is a Caribbean mom, so she was one of those like, had to have long hair, was never allowed to cut my hair. Everybody goes through that phase in high school where it's like, I feel like cutting my hair, everybody's cutting their hair, you know? I was never allowed to, so long hair is all that I knew. So I was just like transitioning, that's it. But the transitioning was a struggle, and long story short, I ended up big chopping. If you guys are interested in hearing a little bit more about my journey and how it all started and stuff, I will link that video up here and also in the description box below. So yeah, by December 2017, I think I had transitioned for only about six, five, six months. So I really had like a very teensy amount of growth. I wasn't completely bald, but it was still very, very short. So when I chopped it, I actually chopped with a Diva Curl hairstylist and we decided that I would go with a little tapered cut. So the top of my hair was a little bit higher than the sides. Like the sides were basically almost, they weren't like shaved, but they're pretty much shaved. Like they were super, super short. Now because my hair was short, it at first did not have any weight to it. My curls were actually super fluffy. They weren't super defined. I used to actually have to finger coil them a lot to get them to curl up. And so because of that, my hair is like so light so it did not like, it didn't grow down immediately. I'll insert some pictures here so you guys can see, but literally my hair definitely grew up for a while before it actually dropped. So I'd say like when my hair first finally started to drop and like grow down a little bit, I feel like that was like my first hair growth milestone. So I have to say, I honestly love my hair at every stage. I kind of just had fun with the process. I promised myself that that was something that I wanted to do. I didn't want to get overwhelmed. I didn't want it to be like a negative kind of thing. I promised myself that I was just going to enjoy the entire process at every single stage. So I honestly and genuinely really did have fun with my hair growing up. And it wasn't until later on in July 2018, so about seven months later, that my hair started to drop in a little bit just a little bit in the front and honestly I feel like the sides were still kind of like growing outwards but it was really like my little bang area in the front actually started to have enough weight to like sit on my forehead a little bit it was still a nice little TWA vibe but it was a slightly different look than it looked before when it was all just up 
Ugh, looking back at these old pictures, I'm like so missing my short hair. I'm telling y'all, the short hair is going to make a return at some point. I don't know when. It's probably not going to be for now because I'm trying to get to my waist first, but whew, it's going to come back. I love it so much. All right, and then I feel like the next big, huge, like, crazy exciting hair growth milestone was when I first noticed that I could put my hair up in a hair tie. When I realized that my hair could go up, there was no talking to me after that. I was like, what? Look at this cute little pop. And honestly, nobody could tell me anything back then. Now I'm looking back at these photos and I'm like, where's the hair? Like, what is there? Like, just, you might as well have it out. Like, why do you have it even clipped up? There's like barely anything up, but I loved it and I was so proud of my little mini poof. So before I actually could put everything up, I was able to do a half up, half down style first. Obviously because of the cut, the top part was a lot longer than the rest of my hair. So I could fit like the top half, but then obviously the bottom was like too short to be able to fit into it as well. So like my half up and half down was just still so, so exciting. So that was around November-ish of 2018. So nearing up to one year since my big chop, that's when I really started to see extra growth and I was like, wow, like I can really start to put my hair back and then about a month or so after I realized that I could half up and half down it then we went for the full poof but then as it grew longer and longer I then realized that I went to this next stage which was my little afro stage like as it grew yes the puff was exciting but then I noticed like when it was out it was it had so much more volume it had so much more life to it it was just like the cutest little curly afro of life so at this point, I had some pretty good hang time. I had my little curly bangs rocking. And at this stage, we're looking at like March 2019. So this is like a year and three months roughly since I big chopped. And then at this point, I started to play around with a little bit of like side swoop action as well. This was a really, really fun stage because I feel like at this point was when I had the most versatility in my journey so far. Um, so I was able to do the puff. I was able to do my half up, half down, but I was also able to experiment with different styles out. We could do all out to the side. You know, I just had so much fun. So yeah, this is basically all within the springtime of 2019. So March, April, May, then my my next hair growth milestone was when my bangs actually outgrew themselves and I could not wear my bangs over my eyes anymore because they would just cover my eyes. So that was more like the later part of summer in 2019, so I would say like July, August. I really started sporting the side part look. And then I would kind of say the rest is history. I have been keeping up with my bangs a little bit. I actually just trimmed them myself since we're all stuck at home. And I'm just continuing basically to let my hair grow out as it wants to. At this point, honestly, in the shower, it's actually very exciting. It goes down to about right here when it's like fully stretched out, drenched with water, like it goes to like the middle of my boob and it is pretty exciting. Here, let me, let me stretch it out for you. Let me stretch it out for you. See? Do you see that? Ah! So yeah, as you can see, I've definitely come a long way at this stage. I'm at about two and a half years. I'm close to two and a half years since my big chop. And I'm still having so much fun with every single stage. But really, when I think back to certain things that I did back then, and then also more of the things that I know now, there are some really major decisions that you can make. And they're like simple things that you can just implement into your natural hair care regimen, but they can be like a night and day difference to make sure that your hair is really growing as fast as it possibly can. So let's get into these tips then. Number one, and this is something that I've kind of gotten to know or gotten to learn about my curls personally recently, is that washing it a little bit more often actually helps me. Now I've also recently left the nine to five life and I'm fully an entrepreneur now. Yay! So I think with that situation, I find it a lot easier to wash my hair at least twice a week now. So I actually wash my hair every three to four days. I really just kind of listen to it and see what it needs. It also depends on my schedule. Some days I will go a full week, but I do notice that my hair is a lot happier and a lot more moisturized when I do it three to four days as opposed to waiting a full week to wash it. And really the whole point of it is to add more moisture back into your curls. I find that if I wait a full seven days, by the seventh day I'm just like, wow, my curls are dry, they're desperate for a wash. Whereas when I do it every three to four days, it's like I'm catching my hair before it gets desperate, filling it back up with moisture, hydration from all that water and brand new product. And then it's just 
so much happier. Of course, this is gonna differ depending on your schedule and also your type of hair. So it's really important to also just kind of listen to your hair and just figure it out for yourself. Your curls will literally always tell you what they need. So this really brings me to my next point, which is moisture. Moisture is so, so, so important when it comes to keeping your hair happy and healthy. And when your hair is happy and healthy, she's gonna grow sis. Make sure you're using them leave-in conditioners and doing your moisture treatments, which then <laughs> brings me on to my third point, which is to make sure that you develop a consistent, healthy, natural hair regimen. And the key word here is consistent. So when I actually look back to the very beginning of my natural hair journey, I'm super proud of myself for this, but I have actually deep conditioned every single week ever since that. Life definitely gets in the way, so I won't say every single weekend, maybe give or take like two or three weekends where something happened, but it has been like a part of my routine, and so it's become kind of second nature. It's not even like a, oh, I gotta do this, oh, blah, blah, like it's not even like a chore anymore. It's kind of like, oh, this is what we're doing. Like this is what, I'm used to, this is what my curls are used to, and I really, really think that that has been a huge help in keeping them super happy and healthy. So not only are you gonna wanna make sure that you're doing your monthly treatments every week, but you're also gonna wanna incorporate like a scalp cleanse in your monthly regimen. So I actually did a whole video on this where I showed you guys my monthly deep scalp cleanse routine. So I'll tie that up here and in the description box below as well so you can check that out. But this is so, so important, especially if you're like me and you prefer to use co-wash instead of shampoo, making sure to get rid of all that buildup in your scalp is so, so important. You know when they say like the health of your hair starts with your scalp, like it's right. And not only do scalp cleanses feel amazing, but they also really help like when you're in there, you're massaging your scalp and stuff. It really helps to encourage increased blood flow to your scalp here and then that promotes more hair growth. Another part of your regimen that is really important is trims. And now I know if your aim of the game is to try and grow your hair, you kind of feel like just grow it, grow it, grow it, don't cut it, stay far away from the scissors. Like I know it's so, so easy to feel that way, but girl, when I tell you trims are so important to get your hair to grow more, it's crazy. Like in those three to four months right after I get a trim is when my hair grows its fastest. I did also explain a little bit of this in my curl dusting video, which again, linked up here and below. But basically when you're trimming, you're oxygenating your hair. So the ends are the oldest part of your hair. And after a while, them girls gotta go, okay? And so when you gotta trim and you're cutting off those dead, dry ends, it's opening up the hair shaft, it's oxygenating it, and it's literally giving your hair brand new life. So even if your ultimate main goal is to grow your hair out no matter what, trims are still super, super important. I always suggest to try and keep your trims at every four to six months, but again, your hair will literally tell you. If you are experiencing crazy amount of frizz, if you're experiencing a ton of shedding, like if anything bad is happening to your hair and it's excessive and there's really no other reason why, nine times out of 10, it's gonna be because your hair needs a trim. For my next tip, this is gonna sound a little bit mommy-like, but here we go, you gotta eat good. What you put into your body is what you get out of your body, right? So honestly, I have to be honest with y'all, I am not the best when it comes to eating. I don't have a super great eating habits. What I do actually do is make sure that I drink lots of water. I actually don't drink soda. I don't drink much juice at all. Like I'm literally such, my friends call me a fish because I'm constantly just always drinking water. If I'm not drinking water, it's usually alcohol, but it's, you know, one of the two. <laughs> You're also gonna wanna go ahead and eat your veggies, which I am guilty of not doing that. Not nearly as much as I'm supposed to. And also try and get in your fruits. I personally love raspberries and blackberries, so I'm constantly snacking on those kind of things as well. But definitely don't ignore the fact that what you put into your body is what you get out of it. Now this also leads me to my next point, which is vitamins. I also get a ton of questions. Alyssa, what vitamins do you use? How does your hair grow so fast? So I haven't ever used hair growth vitamins along my natural hair journey up until January 2020. So back ages ago when I was still relaxed, remember when hair affinity was like popping, it was the thing, it was the trend, everybody was trying it. I didn't need to grow my hair, but everybody was talking about it. So I was like, I'll try it. And that thing broke me out so bad that it scared me away from hair growth vitamins forever. So it really wasn't until this year, January 2020, when I actually was like, you know, let me see what's out there. I looked into the Curls Blueberry Bliss Vitamins 
These things are bomb. At first when I got them, I was so, so nervous to try it, but so many people have said they didn't break out because it's a liquid vitamin and that's really different from what you get in the pills. You absorb a lot more of it. So I was like, you know what, let me just give it a try and girl, it is true. Hairfinity broke me out, but these curls vitamins did not give me not even one pimple. And I will say that they have been working for me very, very well. I find that my hair is like really happy on them and the growth is like, it's for real. Like I need to try and find a better way of documenting my hair growth now that it's a little bit longer so I can show you guys. But yeah, if you are interested in taking hair vitamins, I would 100% recommend these. All right, and then for my next point, I wanna tell y'all to leave your hair alone. Leave it alone. I don't know if you noticed in my hair journey pictures, but I really didn't start touching it up or really like over styling it, coloring it, none of that stuff until much later on in my natural hair journey when it was kind of longer. Um, if you are really, really trying to grow your hair, that is your number one goal. You just need a little bit of extra length. Stop touching your hair. Leave it alone. No more coloring. No heat, which is like ever, even if you're not trying to grow your hair and you just want healthy curly hair, no heat, sis. That's like a huge no-no for me. But yeah, just keep your hair styling to a minimum, be super gentle, and just keep it really simple, honestly. You don't need to have a complicated regimen. You don't have to be doing protective styles in order to make sure that your hair grows. So you don't wanna just leave your hair in a protective style and that's it. Like months and months on end, it's just in a protective style because you're really not feeding your hair with the things that it needs so i personally suggest like yes go ahead and do your protective styles but don't do them longer than a month give your hair that break let it breathe and then feed it with all of the nutrients that it needs that it has been missing for that entire month all right and then for my last point this is a hugely hugely important point like if there's one thing you take out of this video Take this, okay? And that is to listen to your hair. I kind of said it with a couple of the other tips that I mentioned, but it is so important because hair talks to you. If it is frizzy, there is a reason. If it's dry, there is a reason. If it is falling out, sis, there is a reason. So it's all about learning your hair and listening to it when it's telling you something is up. And not only your hair, your scalp will tell you too. Like I notice that if I use products that are a little bit too heavy, my scalp will get itchy like a day after washing it, you know? So it's just important to keep these things in the back of your mind and really just listen to your curls. If you're really committed to the health of your curls and the growth of your curls, then you listen to your hair and I promise you, you cannot Go wrong now I'm sure there are some instances where you're doing every single one of these tips and you just feel like your hair is completely stunted it's not growing at all and if you promise me like right now honestly that you have done all of these tips at that point that's when I would suggest that you talk to a professional not your friends not your brother not your mama a professional hairstylist who understands the actual science of natural hair because then they might be able to help you in a completely different way. It could be something completely different. But yeah, these are basically all the things that I do, tried, tested, and true, ooh, bars, <laughs> in order to make sure that my hair is popping. And when she's popping, she'll grow, I promise you. I really hope you guys found this useful. If you have any additional questions for me, just go ahead and comment them below. I eventually get to all of my comments, so just go ahead, leave your questions below. And if you did enjoy this video, please go ahead and give your girl a thumbs up. And before you leave, two more videos to check out. I want to help you, so just, just check it out. You'll thank me later. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I will catch you in the next one. Bye!